Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all our desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may all be of you and worthily magnify the holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. light of the world born into human pain and joy let our celebration of your birth make us bold witnesses of your love to the glory of God Father Son and Holy Spirit one God forever and ever reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 52 beginning at verse 7 how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news who proclaim peace who bring good tidings who proclaim salvation who say to Zion your God reigns listen your watchmen lift up their voices together they shout for joy when the Lord returns to Zion they will see it with their own eyes Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the Majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, He makes his angels wings, his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever, and righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above with your companions, by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, In the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them back up like a robe. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you remain the same, and your servants will never end. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Luke. In those days, Caesarea Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to be registered. So, Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee of Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth be peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The Nativity of our Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Ghost and the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, in accordance to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. We believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our deliverer. Amen. Amen. We've just sung a beautiful carol uh, for our grandeur of joy to the world, the Lord has come. I don't know about you, but I waited for this night with great expectation for a number of years and with much eagerness. But I don't want to keep you here for too long. It will soon be midnight, but let us send the Lord that we'll still have the lights. <laughs> but I just want to pose one, actually we could say one question in two parts to you. How much joy, how much joy can you inhale and hold in your lungs without exhaling it? Angel Gabriel couldn't inhale so much joy and not exhale it upon St. Mary on the day of the Annunciation. Baby John in her mother's tummy, in Elizabeth's tummy, couldn't hold that joy when Mary went to see uh, her older, much older cousin, cousin Elizabeth, and the baby tumbled. Just a joy that just couldn't be held uh, inside and not be expressed. The choirs of angels could not hold it. The shepherds after receiving the news of joy, they couldn't keep it to themselves. Many of us couldn't keep this joy to herself. And on this day, we celebrate that this joy of the Lord and our God being with us actually was given to birth through this wonderful lady who said yes to the Lord and said, let it be unto me according to your will. She couldn't hold that joy to herself. Joseph, even though we heard from last Sunday's uh, gospel, he was disappointed, confused, and an angel came and unpacked what all, who this whole thing is about. He couldn't keep those news to himself. Our Nativity Gospel today tells us of these and many others who can keep the news of the joy of the coming of the Lord, of the coming of God into our midst uh, to themselves. It is our turn now. How much joy can we inhale and keep to ourselves? Joy to the world that humanity has another chance to be renewed by the image of the invisible God come in the form of a little baby. Joy to the world and creation that it has a chance to be renewed by the one whose word sits at the heart of creation. Let 
such a huge dose of joy comes in the form of a little baby born in a particular place, born in a particular, at a particular time, under occupation, such universal joy packaged in a small little baby. Well, this is because God was not out of his mind when he created you and I to be very particular people at particular times and to live uh, in a particular way under particular conditions. It may seem scandalous that something so cosmic and so huge and so all-embracing comes in the form of a particular person <coughs> in a particular part of the world. God was happy to create you to be particular as well. And so to come and meet you becomes in the form of a particular child who was born to a particular mother, like you were born to a particular mother, born in a particular culture, just like you're born in a particular culture, born in a particular country, just as you're born in a particular country. And that's how God works. It's not a mistake. God wants to do great things with particular us, in as much as he did great things with that particular Jesus who now comes into our midst. And that is the joy that we inhale today. The joy of the incarnation. The joy of a God who says, I'm not just going to sit up there in the sky and be far away from what's happening, but I want to come into the particularity of your life, through the particularity of my son. With that humility, we can go out there and make a difference. This is a God who works in ways that may seem small, but actually they are quite big. He has worked in the lives of many witnesses through the ages, particular people, and here in South Africa we know quite a lot of them. You know I like talking about Desmond Tutu and the joy that he just couldn't hold even under difficult circumstances. That's how God works. That particular Jesus wants to make a home in your particular heart. Inhale this inclination. And the more and more you inhale it, you realize that there's a lot of it, and you can't inhale it alone. You have to inhale it with others. There needs to be a community that lives out this joy out there in the world. A community that turns this joy into a certain kind of ethics and justice, but that is never worn out. Filled with this deep joy, we come today. And to try to keep it in yourself, it would be like a yogi sitting there, meditating, breathing in and forgetting to breathe out. Guess what will happen? It would be like a chain smoker who inhales and forgets to exhale. Guess what will happen? We cannot keep this joy to ourselves. That joy to the world, that joy that is for the cosmos and the universe, flows through us like it came into the world through that particular little child called Jesus. So we sang joy to the world, because this is a joy that we inhale. And in a moment, we'll be seen singing Silent Night, as we inhale that joy and take it into our lives and make it real for ourselves, because it is only in that way that we can share it and make it real to others. When it works in us, then we can pass it on. So joy to the world, the Lord is come, a very happy Christmas to you all, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing touch. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from our fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Help us from our pride, which can make us claim in vulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Lord Jesus, heal our all. Stay by us during this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, De defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from the illness or only a few, Lord Jesus Christ, stay with us as we endure and mourn, assist and prepare. In place of our anxiety, give us your peace. Lord Jesus, heal us. Amen. Ye that truly and earnestly repent to you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. We confess to Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and through our own grievous fault. Wherefore we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, and deliver you from all evil. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ said unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 
Hear also what St. John said. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy.
Let us bless these gifts. Bless, O Lord, we beseech thee these thy gifts and sanctify them unto this holy use, that by them we may be fed unto everlasting life of soul and body through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is the times of Jesus Christ's holy institution, 
in remembrance of his death and compassion, may he partake us of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shared for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, do render unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And looking for his coming again with power and great glory, we offer here unto thy divine majesty this body of eternal life and this cup of everlasting salvation. And we humbly beseech thee to pour thy Holy Spirit upon us and upon these thy gifts, that all who are partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, and be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain the mission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to pray.
O Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy Hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. 
Let me never be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend me. And in the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you. That with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost 
be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen.